Oi, oi, Cheltenham is back. I know I've promised a video for the weekend's racing. I am waiting for Sunday's declarations before I can divulge Saturday's and Sunday's info, but I'm conscious it is Friday and I've not given a bit of an insight to it. So for a few people that have been messaging and asking what I fancy today or what I'll be having a bet on, I'm going to quickly run through the, uh, the Cheltenham card. I'll be honest with you, right from the off, there's no real bets today for me. Um, it is early in the season and I'm trying to be a bit more disciplined. I've talked about like a, a staking method that I'm going to try and apply. And I'll be brutally honest, I can do all right this time of year. Um, they can, there's like a few that I could look at trying to bet. It's very hard for me to price up value and sneak it out in these earlier ones. And I'll say why it's so hard to do it is, I'm, like again, like as a class snob, I prefer to get all the information. That's why I know I'm going to keep banging on about it for the short term. But the So Royal example is much easier. You've got hard and cold facts to look at and we know where, where they're going. But by the by, I'll give you my opinion on the races anyway. There was one that I could have looked at back in today. I'm not. And there's one I've got like a strong interest in terms of watching for going forward. So similar to the Chep Study stuff, no real bets, but some views to going forward. So in the conditional jockeys handicap hurdle, I will be, again, be brutally honest. I would normally go through every single runner in every single race, look at their form, go back through it, see which ones I thought had a bit of a wiggle room on their mark. But I, I haven't done that for some of the races today. So this would be a typical example of it. I want to try and not necessarily steer clear of these because I don't want to burst my bank, but I want to steer clear of these because I don't want to burst my bank. So Calico for Dan Skelton, Ellen Valley, uh, Lively Citizen, and uh, Swaff and Bullbeck were the horses that were on my shortlist before the prices started to come out for it. Um, the first few that I've mentioned are right up the top near the betting, so I can get within there. With Swaff and Bullbeck, I, like, I rate Stuart Edmonds as a trainer. Like, it's not too often that his horses are too far away from the mark and he does get them ready for um, for, for big days. The run at Fontwell last month, I don't think was too bad, considering he got beaten such a like wide margin, but is what it is. Thought that wasn't like an okay performance in the grand scheme of things. And obviously have been chasing before as well. So it makes me feel a little bit like there's something in the pipeline for this horse. So I'll be, I'll be keen to see how Swaff and Bullbeck runs. It is a big price. There's lots of places that are on offer. Um, and as I say, it seems to always run fairly well, but I won't be having a bet in the race. There's a few, like I say, towards the head of the betting that have got genuine chances or cases to be made for them. But I just think there's a lot that room with a chance in there. So good luck if you're having a bet in that. Do let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you're back in. Um, in the two-mile novices chase, I, I do like this as a race year on year. Um, when the declarations came out, there was only two I was massively interested in. Ashtree Meadow, I think, wins. Um, jumping can be a tiny bit ropey, but I potentially don't think that 9-4 to isn't a bad price about the horse. Now, Strawfan Jack impressed quite a few people the last day. Um, Oaken Risk, I think, is a nice horse for this sort of sphere, like this sort of level, like maybe pushing into 140s performance. Utred, that's gone to Dan Skelton now. Um, Buckingham's bought him from Gigginstown in a recent sale. I was well impressed with his last hurdle run where he beat Zakariva, and I was impressed with his chase debut. Um, I thought he did everything like an utter professional. Um, the two miles and on quick ground would be a slight question mark for me. Like I think he probably wants a middle trip, and sometimes these middle trip horses look better because they're running over the middle trip. But I'm really keen to see how this horse goes on stable debut. So Utred... For the scout ones, would be one massive to keep an eye on. If I was gun to head, forced to have a bet in the race, I know it's the favourite, but I think Ashtree Meadow looks relatively solid, to be honest. Um, the Ballymore Novices Hurdle, I can't really get as excited about music drivers. A lot of people seem to be commenting saying that it looks like a good thing. Um, probably goes and wins, doesn't it? But it's not a very deep race, to be honest with you, and there wouldn't be anything that I'd be excited to either keep an eye on or to look for a betting interest, so... Make of that what you will. Then we've got a Novices Handicap Chase. Now, this is a race that I like. Again, like I like Novices Handicap Chase. I've talked about this in previous videos where there's horses that were getting off their hurdle marks. We can get some good things in here. And we can get some horses that you get a competitive race, maybe such as this, where there will be so many winners in behind. I looked at this from the off and thought that hanging there is a solid jumper. Will suit, go out in front. Like I thought hanging there was the one to be on feel like hanging there was priced up maybe two to one or in and around that to begin with and was out as big as four to one last night. Money's starting to come back in, so I'd say that's maybe more market correction than strong fancies on there. Um, Fergal's horse, pull again green, making chasing debut. I know there's a lot of people that like him. Um, Champagne gold's a monster price. Um, 
maybe the maybe that speaks volumes in terms of the fact that there's no money support and Tully Big, I know a few people like that, but I don't I don't like the jumping of a lot of these horses. Um, so really, with all of that said, I like hanging there was borderline going to be a bet today, but I want I, I I'm terrified. You know, I did the video recently talk about how the Irish horses are further forward than the British horses. Um, I'm a tiny bit scared of that. Um, and it is, I say not difficult, but like a, a top weight handicap horse in a novice handicap chase that's already run a bit this season. It's had his mark wiggled. I don't know. Like I, f I feel like the three or four to one about him is enough to sort of offset that risk. And I feel like it's not, I wouldn't say like monster value because it's very hard for me to price this race up, to be honest with you. But I think hanging there is probably a bet as well. Um, I th I'd, I'd say like as strong a fancy as Ashby Meadow if I was putting him up in that particular Mark, and obviously chases around Cheltenham, like front-running horses have a very, very good record. Like it's, the be it's the place to be. So I think hanging there jumps well. Obviously, that's the kiss of death. But hanging there would, been, would have been one that I was tempted to look at. I think if it had been priced up and he wasn't put in favourite to begin with, and he maybe had been put in a five or six to one, I may have actually been tempted to have a little small go, but it wouldn't have been anything more than a small go. Um, then there's a two-and-a-half-mile handicap hurdle. I mean, it's cool Cody for the each-way muggy betters. I'm sure plenty of people want to get involved in that, can see that, but the price for those sorts of ones, like I want a horse that I think can definitely win, um, isn't anything in there of any interest, to be honest with you. So, I mean, there's no point wasting any more time on that. We'll try and keep this concise. The amateur jockey's handicap chase. Horse powerful position. I talked about this one in the three runner race at Cheltenham, where I, I, I spoke to Darren about it with some of its point form a couple of seasons ago at Chepstow, where it was well beat, but it was battered from 25s into 92 favourite. It was rated 90 then. It's 113 now, so it is 23 pounds higher than then, but there's been lots of talk going out there. Josh put it in his preview for the weekend that he'd managed to speak to Christian Williams at the McCoys, and this was the plan. So almost like he's been plotted for this race. I think Christian Williams won this race last year as well. So again, the muggy extra places, whether it's five or six places you can get, it's about a five to one poke. I can see the angle for people wanting to have a little freebie go on a horse like that. Um, I, I, I'm not getting involved. Um, I, again, I made the point when we did talk to che uh, Chepstow that the horse was better than the mark that he was. I don't feel like I can make as much of a justification. The horse is much better than the price that he is. Now, um, the newest one was subject to support overnight, but the exchange is still held quite strong about that one, so probably closer to its true price now. A Knight and Lambon was another one that had a little bit of money overnight with the bookies, but again, the exchange would have suggested that it wasn't real massive market support. So, again, a race I haven't really got stuck into. Um, probably just waffled for no reason there. The last race, there is a horse in here that I'm keen to look at. I haven't looked at the revised prices of this race this morning, so it was 25s last night, but that was a general price. Um, it's the Sam Thomas horse, but it's just waiting for Racing Post to load up now. I'm not going to bother editing this because it'll be quicker for me to get it up. That's what she said. Come on, come on. I know we've got Holland back in there for Fergal O'Brien. I don't know why this is going so slow. Um, yeah, and there's the uh, an Irish horse as well, I think, isn't there? Oh, God, this is borderline awkward, isn't it? Hope you're all having a nice day. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Right, we're in. So there's Anne Mee for Gordon Elliott in there. There is Twin Jets, sorry, not an Irish horse, Twin Jets for Milton Harris that's won his couple of bumpers that was being supported. So Dear Mark is the Sam Thomas horse that I was mentioning. I'm still waiting now for the prices to load up. Obviously, it's going to go a little bit funny. Um, it's got, like, nice breeding further back. Um, went about his business in bumpers okay, sort of progressed enough to go and win a race on the fourth attempt. I don't think this is a very deep race. I don't really root any of the horses in it, but... Uh, I'd be borderline surprised if anything in this race is going to be better than a 140s horse. And again, like I know I'm being harsh on a few of them. I've only had a couple of runs. I think this dear mark looks interesting. So if you look at the bet and it's two to one each of two Hullenbach and Twin Jets, the one that I was pretending was an Irish horse. And then it starts to get into double figure prices not far after that. Like John McConnell's is in there at six to one. And me for Gordon Elliott's eight to one. But again, probably Irish price to be short. Petrosian that's gone from Nichols to Nicky Henderson's about an 11 to one short. Friendless in the market, first time hood. I do really think this dear Mark could probably be third or fourth best in. Um, I don't know about extended places, but I feel like he's a, a bit of a price, to be honest with you. I Again, I don't want to be betting for the sake of betting this season. I'm trying to bet as a better rather than a punter, so I'll be leaving him alone. But he would be one I'd be very tempted. At, he's 25, I don't know what price we got on the exchange, but I'd be very tempted to have a small investment on him. So they would be the three, I guess, for the day that if you were forced to have a bet or you wanted to hear me talk about something, that I might bet Ashtree Meadow hang in there and then possibly dear Mark. 
at a price. And again, I can see the scummy each way angle on powerful position, but wouldn't be for me, so I wouldn't be necessarily advising that as a bet. Anyway, we've got to wrap this up for the 10 minute jobby. I'll be back with Saturday and Sundays. There are a couple of ones that I do want to bet there, so I'll have a bit more depth and I wish you all the best of luck.